So, for those who don't follow my channel, I collect old vintage keyboards from places like well, this estate sale. I found this Casio CT380, and I really wasn't familiar with this model, but it was being sold very cheaply, so I ended up getting it for $12 with stand and all. I got it home, and I was surprised how clean it was. I mean, sure, it was a little dusty, but considering most of the keyboards I buy, this one was in great shape. That is, until I took the battery cover off. Oh, man. Now... This is not the first time I've had to deal with battery corrosion, so I'm used to this. I managed to get this off-brand Chameleon battery out of there, and it was pretty corroded. It appears the previous owner did a big no-no in mixed battery types. Interestingly enough, the Duracell batteries in here were not corroded at all, and there was some leftover corrosion in the battery compartment. But I didn't see the real extent of the damage until I looked at the underside of the keyboard. Holy cow! This is clearly from the battery compartment, and I've never seen anything like this before. Well, I'd better take this thing apart to see how extensive the damage is. I started with this screw since I knew it would be the hardest one to remove. It was quite stiff, but I eventually got it to move, and uh, then I took the rest of them out. However, I was not able to get the metal cover to come off. It, it, particularly on the rusted side. Um, eventually I used a knife and just sliced apart the plastic from the corrosion. At last I managed to get it open and holy cow to the third power. If you thought it was bad on the outside, the inside was even worse. I'm still in shock from how bad this thing is. You can see the positive battery terminal is totally gone, leaving only the wire. Interestingly enough, the negative terminal is fine where the Duracell batteries were, and the rest of the inside looks to be in decent shape, except for this ground cable. I'd like to get a look at the logic board, but all of the wires are soldered on and there's no easy way to remove it. So part of what I'm trying to figure out is what year this keyboard was made in. There were no markings anywhere on the outside indicating a year, and a Google search came up inconclusive. This here looks almost like a date code suggesting 1994, which is plausible. However, the date code on the plastic suggests 1989. The stamped part of the plastic even suggests 1989. So that means this keyboard is about 27 years old. I put the two corroded screws in a bowl of vinegar and let it sit. I decided to switch gears over to the metal piece. I took it outside and poured vinegar on it. Now, I've used vinegar before to neutralize and remove corrosion on smaller objects, but this is too large to submerge. So, unless I wanted to fill the whole bathtub with vinegar, I just uh, tried brushing it on for about 30 minutes. You can see some of it came off, but it really didn't make much of a dent. So, the next thing I tried was a wire brush. Now, this was making a dent and clearly removing a lot of big chunks, but despite another 30 minutes of scrubbing, I still hadn't made as much progress as I'd hoped. So, I decided to put it aside while I think about how to deal with that. I went back to disassembling the keyboard. I really wanted to get a look at that logic board, so I desoldered these wires over here since those would be easy to reattach. Well, I finally got a look at it, and uh, there's nothing special other than this embedded microprocessor from Panasonic. Hmm. Well, I really wanted to go ahead and take everything out of this keyboard because I wanted to clean all of the keys and be able to use a power wash to help get rid of all the corrosion that stuck to the plastics. It's really annoying that none of these ribbon cables have any sort of disconnect on them. This thing was designed very cheaply. I finally got down to uh, just the key mag, and unfortunately I still couldn't figure out how to get the keys out. This has got to be the strangest and most irritating design I've ever dealt with, and I've disassembled dozens of keyboards. Eventually I just said screw it, and I just put it back together, and I just decided that I would clean it the best I could without the power wash. So back to this metal, I decided the time for games was over, and it was time to bring out the heavy equipment. I started with a brush on my bench grinder. At last, some progress. This was going to work. I got all of the edges cleaned off as well as the underside. Even though the metal was cleaned, it still had a discoloration to it. And I had to use an angle grinder to get the other side. 
I gave it a good rinse and dried it off with a cloth. I figured this was as much as I'd be able to clean the metal. But I still didn't like the way it looked, so I gave it a coat of paint with some spray paint I had laying around in my garage, and it actually turned out quite nice. Here are the screws after soaking 24 hours. I was able to brush off most of the corrosion, but they're now just bare metal as the yellow shine is gone, but they certainly look better than they did. I constructed a new ground cable to connect to the metal base. Since I was not able to power wash the plastics, I just used vinegar to scrub away the leftover corrosion. Since it's on plastic, it comes off pretty easily. And here's what it looks like all done. That's a far cry better than how it looked before. Now, I did not fix the positive battery terminal since I pretty much always run my keyboards on external power, but since I do have it all put back together and functioning now, um, I'll go ahead and give you a quick demonstration with a little multi-track recording that I put together. So, Casio claims this keyboard has 210 sounds, which is total baloney. Uh, the truth of the matter is it has 20 selectable sounds, and here I'll show you some of them. Now the reason they claim it has 210 sounds is because there is a button here you can select which will allow a dual voice mode and you can combine you know, in, uh, the different voices together which in theory I guess I haven't tried to work the math out but I guess it would be somewhere around 210 voices. So what do I think about this keyboard? Well, um, this is a sampling keyboard and it was one of the first sampling keyboards. Um, not the first, I think Casio's first sampling keyboard had came out like four years before this one. But um, the thing is, if you've heard one sampling keyboard, you've heard them all. I mean, they just really don't have that much uniqueness to them. And uh, I think that's, that's too bad really because Casio made some really interesting keyboards in the early and mid 1980s but by the time they got to the sampling keyboards they just all suffer from being terminally boring. So that's kind of what I think of this one. I mean it's an okay keyboard even today I guess if someone wanted to learn to play piano but it's just boring. On the bright side I did just find like the mother load of old Casio keyboards and I'm going to be doing some reviews on some of these products here pretty soon.